the average Tyson plant in the US for cows produces about 330 million pounds of meat a year. If you were to take the biggest cell culture facility in the entire world, the biggest one in the entire world, which is Samson Biologics in South Korea, and that was to run every single hour for an entire year, it would produce less meat than Tyson produces in a day. We're fucked. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great week so far. So we had a video earlier where we looked at this Bioreactor startup, POW Biotech, and I'm pretty sure I had some comments in there about good meat, because as we know, there's been a lot of press recently about good meat and their failed partnership with ABEC in Singapore. I'm pretty sure in that video I probably made some sort of comparison, and I probably shouldn't have done that, that was probably a mistake on my part, because I think it's important to separate out the two different industries, one being precision fermentation and the other being cultivated meat. From my perspective, I'm really glad that Good Meat stopped the partnership with ABEC in Singapore, because if we look at the ABEC company, they were a pharmaceutical bioreactor manufacturing company. It really seems like, again, I don't know, because I'm not working in this day-to-day, -day, like if you're actually an employee, or a CEO of these company, and you know what the day-to-day -day work is, you know the designs of the bioreactors, you know what the company is using. I'm just going on the internet talking about what I'm seeing on the news and in videos, but I'm really glad that they stopped that partnership because I think that proved to anyone trying to scale up cultivated meat that you can't do it with this technology that's used for the pharmaceutical industry. Everyone talks about size being a constraint, and as we'll see in this video, you have to look a little bit deeper than that. For the entire industry, including precision fermentation and cultivated meat, the biggest limit to scale, as we've talked about many times now, is bioreactor capacity. And as I've said a number of times, it's also bioreactor design. We can't scale these industries if we're using pharmaceutical bioreactors, because that's a technology that was built 50 to 70 years ago and was designed for a specific purpose. It wasn't designed for food. So there's a cool new company that I've heard about now for quite a few months and I've just started investigating, so I wanted to share a clip. Arc Biotech, they're innovating in the cultivated meat bioreactor space and looks like they're doing some really cool things. So with that long introduction, let's get into the video. Yassi Quint, founder and CEO of Arc Biotech. Cultivating meat is bottlenecked by super duper expensive production capacity. Globally, there's about 15 million liters of bioreactor capacity, cell culture production capacity. 15 million liters is equivalent to six Olympic swimming pools. And if all of that capacity in the entire world were to go from producing mostly pharma to producing cultivated meat, it would feed the US for about half a day or the world for less than an hour. That's not gonna help anyone. And the culprit is this thing called a bioreactor, and specifically a stir tank bioreactor. 99% of bioreactors used in pharma are stir tanks. They have something called an impeller. It's basically a big blender or a small blender. And if anyone who has ever tried to make a smoothie knows, Blenders aren't the best things ever. Even if you have a Vitamix or a Ninja or whatever your go-to blender is, they suck. And it's the same thing here. You, can't, you just can't go that big. The biggest bioreactor in the world is 25,000 liters, which is about the size of this part of the room. Very, very, very small. And that bioreactor running every single hour for an entire year would produce about enough meat to feed a very small high school. Again, not going to really make a dent in the world. And the thing is, they just can't get that big. The, the, at some point, this impeller requires so much energy that it's terrible for the environment, but more importantly, it needs to spin so fast to create homogeneous mixing that it's going to kill the cells. And so, cultivated meat is bottlenecked. The average Tyson plant in the US for cows produces about 330 million pounds of meat a year. If you were to take the biggest cell culture facility in the entire world, the biggest one in the entire world, which is Samson Biologics in South Korea, 
And that was to run every single hour for an entire year. It would produce less meat than Tyson produces in a day. We're fucked. And so, at ARC, we've reimagined the bioreactor. We've reimagined cultivating production. There's no set of incremental changes to the current process that is going to solve cultivated meat. There's just no way. We don't need solutions that are 10% better. We don't even need solutions that are 10 times better. We need solutions that are 100 times better. And that's what we've done at ARC. We've created a bioreactor that is 50 times bigger, 90% less, and will double your yield. ARC's intelligent bioreactor. This is a small one. This is 1,000 liters. This, we have a physical version of this that's in a cultivated meat company today. There's two things that I'll just call it that are really, really cool about this. And this is like really cool. The first one is the internals. Do you see uh, impeller? Do you see anything that looks like a blender? No. We use tubes, which as an airlift technology, which I'll talk about in a second, these tubes allow you to scale to millions of liters without impacting performance. It actually gets bigger, better as you get bigger. And the second thing is, We've created a really smart operating system that allows every run to be the best run. And I'll, I'll talk about more, more about that in a second. So we use something called airlift technology, but we do it a little bit differently. We have air that could either go outside the tubes or inside the tubes and creates mixing. We use a lot of computational fluid dynamics, a lot of fancy equations to model this out and to create just the right airflow and just the right dimensions. But what this allows is that for each tube is a modular unit. And once you got one tube right, you just add as many tubes as you want and it creates the exact same thing. And so if you want to 10x the size, just 10x the tubes, performance does not change. And so instead of expanding up, we expand out. And so we create giant pools, like Olympic swimming pools, filled with these tubes. And so at the beginning, you might start off a little bit small. And then you get larger and larger until you hit a certain size where you have optimal performance. And then you just expand outwards. And so you could have a million liter bioreactor. You could have a 10 million liter bioreactor. You certainly don't, don't want the 25,000 liter bioreactor. And because of the way the cost structure is, bigger is cheaper. There's a lot of fixed costs in bioreactors. And so when you scale up, you're just saving money. All the variable costs scale at a factor below one, and the tubes are really, really cheap. And so at scale, our bioreactor is 90% cheaper than the biggest bioreactor in the world today. The second thing is this operating system, the optimization engine. And so we've created the first cultivated meat digital twin. We can optimize over 15 parameters in real time for cell culture. This allows us to figure out what parameters we should change algorithmically to create optimal performance, which enables us to double a company's yield. Just a few months ago, we, we took a company's process, we fed it into our engine, and we got 115% improvement. This is a process that they had been working on for five years. This company had raised tens of millions of dollars and just a little bit of modeling, double their yield. Now, that's really great, but to actually actualize that in real time, you need a better execution system. And so we've gone back to first principles and rethought how controls are done. I started, when I was a teenager, I interned on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. This was at the very end of the pen and paper era. There was still ticker tape all over the floor, and what you had was really brilliant subject matter experts who were making split time decisions and hopefully making a lot of money for their clients. But then we brought in big data, we brought in computers. And so my first job out of college was working as a, as a quant researcher at Two Sigma, which is just a few blocks away. And what a quant hedge fund does is they say, we're gonna take all the genius of all these people plus more, and we're gonna feed that into an algorithm, and we're gonna take big data and make much better optimal decisions. 
Today, biopharma, the, what people are using for cell culture, is still in the pen and paper era. And at ARC, we want to bring it into the digital age. And so, we've developed what I believe is the only solution for cultivating meat to scale, so that in our lifetime, cultivating meat will simply become meat. Now, these are all startups. They may succeed. They may not. It's a matter of time. We'll see. There is a recent cultivated meat cellular agriculture day at Tufts University in Massachusetts. And of course, views about the status of cultivated meat varied sharply. We have industry skeptics claiming that it's never going to work. And then we have Arc Biotech founder Yossi Quint suggesting that it's a lot further ahead than people think. While scores of companies have proved that they can make cultivated meat in the lab, only a handful have progressed to pilot scale, where they're where they are producing it at a loss. No one has yet produced it at large scale. And a shakeout is expected over the next 12 months as startups run out of money. Bringing down the cost of goods will require optimizing cell culture media formulations, improving biomass yields, optimizing the bioprocess, and building and designing better bioreactors. I think in many ways we're a lot further ahead than people think. Quint said, when I started Arc Biotech, my dream was $2 per liter of cell cultured media. Today, there are seven companies that I know of that are south of that. And there's at least one coming up south of a dollar a liter. All of that innovation has only happened in the last couple of years. Every time I check in with companies, they come up with a new innovation and a new way to bring down that cost. So whether the floor is 80 cents, 50 cents, 25 cents, I don't know. But at $1 a liter, you could be producing commodity scale cultivated meat at 10 or so dollars a pound. If you blend that with plant-based meat, suddenly you're super competitive and you could be at Walmart prices. Of course, a lot of innovation has to happen. A lot of startups are going to fail in the next 6, 12 months, 2 years. Probably won't seem like a lot of progress has happened. But if you are a long-term investor, 10, 15, 20 years, guarantee that we're going to see cultivated meat products in our lifetime. Thanks as always for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.